Dan and Ren and Jay will share Tales of folks so unaware They lack in grace and sometimes choose The life they choose will make the news Breaking down each epic fail In Florida there's half price bail I'm happy to say they Couldn't make this up So listen to our podcast jam With co-host Arm and Dan Remember, don't be a jerk Cause when the music quits the funny hits And we are gonna take you down Stick around Make a sound, come down, it's Dumb People Town. Hey, Townies, welcome to another episode of Dumb, Dumb People Town. Town. Population you. Population Ross, Jeff Jeffrey Ross, Ross, the Roastmaster General. It is so nice to just talk to you. I see you and I get a smile on my face, no matter how difficult these times are. I just love you, brother, and I'm so happy to be in contact with you right now. Thank you, guys. It's great to see you both. And, uh, you haven't changed a bit, either of you. <laughs> We've aged a little bit. We've aged a little bit through this whole thing. No, I was. Yep. Uh, we were texting with uh, Brian Moses the other day, and just that was on Tuesday. And I was thinking to myself, you know what I need right now more than anything to go up to the comedy store late night and be a part of a roast battle. I, See like, that? I needed it in our core. Just even just the the. the you know why? You know why? And it, it. I thought about it too. Jay and I were talking about it, and Dan knows. Dan's judged the roast battle with yeah. us up there. There. Yeah. For it being a battle, there is so much love in that room. Do you know what I'm saying? Like anybody who comes up and just is mean, they get, they basically get literally stiff armed by the audience. If <laughs> if you come up with love and you do it out of love, isn't that like the most beautiful thing in the world, Jeff? It's it's cathartic and it's bonding and it's healing. And people keep asking me if I miss stand up not really yeah. but i do miss the roast battles yes well the only stand up i haven't had a break for 30 years but <laughs> ro the roast lounge battle lizards. But lounge dude, lizards also, lounge though. lizards no Jeffrey i mean a, a break like i didn't stop for 30 oh, years right, that's right, right that's right but a break. you also have one of the funniest things that's happened during this time where we're all stuck in our house when you had jeremiah b the Tiger King on your yeah. show, and everybody bought it. Everybody bought it. So good. It, oh my it god! It was, it was one of those perfect bits. Um, but you on my podcast. I've yeah. been having you know celebrity guests, and mm -hmm. uh, and during the pandemic, you can get big stars, sure, because everybody's home. Right. 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 So I had Brad Paisley. I had oh Chelsea god. Handler. Oh my god! I had uh, Al Franken, yeah. and then. So having Joe Exotic didn't seem that crazy for right. people. And you both crush it. Like you let it just enough in the right ways. And then like Jeremiah, I mean, such a pro with his characters. Like he knew where to play it. And it was like at a time where everyone really needed to laugh that hard or just be that suckered into something to distract them away from like everything else that was happening. Because <laughs> you laugh at the bit as it's going on. And then when you realize that you've been duped, you laugh at yourself. It's just such a, <laughs> it's the double. It's so great. And again, you, there is love. And the reason why the roast battle is love is because you're at the center of it. You're at the top of that iceberg. So like it all trickles down to everybody, to Moses, to the wave, to the judges. I, I always love being up there when a judge doesn't get it. And you're like, yeah. no, 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 you're not playing the right way. You got to you gotta tell what you love about what they did. It's not all about ripping them to shreds. Um, well, look, that's what we try and do on this show, Dumb People Town. We know we try and roast dumb behavior. We try and yeah. roast dumb behavior. And so we've got you on here. Let's just go through a couple of stories. And I know that we'll all feel better at the end of this if, if you're in I'm, I'm so I'm so ready for this, guys. Okay. I needed some, some cathartic dumb people town you today. You got it. Because it. we are going to get our first story sent in to us by Lenny at ML Leonard 8. Mm -hmm. Uh, all common, the number eight, not the word. Leonard he Part sent eight. it to me at Daniel Van Kirk, hashtag dumb people town. You can do that too if you want to send me a dumb story that you see. Keep it fun, keep it light. Because today we've got a Greenly. Oh, okay. okay. Jeff. Now, Jeff, did we ever do a Greenly with you? Because you're going to no. love this so much. All right. So, Will Greenlee is a journalist. Quote, I, unquote. I use that very loosely for the TC Palm down in Florida. Okay. And he actually was one of the early guys who broke the whole Robert Kraft, you know, massage like massage parlor story. Massage parlor oh, story. Okay. So he was one of the But that's a real that. story. That's a real story. So he writes about dumb behavior down in Florida. But our theory is that he has a 1,500 word count that he has to get in. 
And these stories equal about 800 words. And so he spends <laughs> most of his articles explaining things that we already know to us. Mm-hmm. Like he, it, he one time wrote like two verses of the thong song in his description of it. We're like, I can't believe this he's, is journalism. Yeah, he's also <laughs> explained what an anchor is and how it works. You drop it. He also like has explained what socks are and where they go uh-huh. on your feet. Wow. We have done this. Uh, the people that have been like just ravaged their brains by the hearing his stories, like Will Arnett, John C. Riley, Michael Che. So here's the deal. So the Bobby game- Lee almost... He Bobby Lee almost relapsed. Bobby, yeah. Lee, Bobby Lee had to go into the bathroom and take a shit in the middle of this okay. game. Okay, so <laughs> here's the game. Dan is going to read the story, all right? So now that we've set mm-hmm. it up, and Dan has either he has strategically placed a bunch of his own fake descriptions of things that we already know in oh. with Greenlee descriptions, and our job is to try and guess whether it was Dan, Dan or Greenlee. Okay, or Greenlee. so here okay. we go. All I'm right, in. So, so I'm anytime in. there's bullshit. Either he wrote it or I did. I did. And okay, Dan ready? is so, I'm just going to tell you, Jeff, Dan is so good. Don't like, try to look for a pattern. We can't even. Or get, do. Jay and I have done this so many times and we can't even. All right, here, so we, here we go. Indian, All right. Indian River County, which feels problematic to say. Okay. <laughs> a woman alternatively described as completely unclothed and naked got locked up after accusations of spitting on a cyclist, according to an affidavit. I will tell you, spitting, you, that's a, Automatic Spitting's, hit. That's the meanest thing that you, uh, to me is spinning. Unless, so, unless, unless that cyclist is Lance Armstrong. Okay. <laughs> then I think we're okay. <laughs> or it's a lot of enthusiastic consent to be spit on. <laughs> yeah. You have to ask for it. That has to be a fetish, right? Yeah. That's probably right. a fetish. A hundred percent. Right, Jeff? A fetish or a hobby or just a way to kill time during quarantine. <laughs> right? I'm going to see if I can hit this guy. Yeah. Well, now that's like you've weaponized it that's with true. quarantine. Well, yeah. Like so, with what's going on right now. I know. On someone. Uh, the case of the ex- ex- expectorating, ex- expectorating, I know, I tried, <laughs> lady who reportedly lacked in loincloth went down April 30th on the 3300 block of 45th Street in Indian River County. Okay. Emergency dispatchers huh. got several calls indicating a woman was, quote, completely unclothed, and another caller stated she was naked and took her off her dress, the affidavit states. Mm-hmm. She was well, naked and then took off her dress? Yes. Okay. Okay. While being completely unclothed or naked is acceptable in the confines of a private residence, it is considered poor form to the extent that it is illegal on a public street. <laughs> who wants it's gotta you, be. Come on. That's who him. wants you to that's know? Him. You think that's Dan? That's no. You no, think that's, that's Greenlee. Writer. That's Greenlee. Okay. Yeah. Who wants you to know where it's okay to be naked? I think I agree with Jeff. I think that's Greenlee. I think it's Greenlee also. All right, so okay. we all agree it's Greenlee. Because okay. it's interesting. Like that's a, that's something that he could put in the article that people might not know the <laughs> naked like in New York, I was always amazed in the village women can go topless. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That's right. But not but, down in the TC. But n- maybe not in other places. That's right. Okay, so. The person that wanted you to know that being completely unclothed or naked is acceptable in the confines of a private, private residence, but it's considered poor form on a public street. That was written by Will Greenlee. Yeah! Yes. We're Very in. good. One right. for ding, one. Ding, 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 one ding. One for one. one. Okay. It should be noted that clothing not required facilities, such as nudist resorts, allow people to be all naturel. <laughs> Who wanted you to know that you could go to a nudist resort if you did want to be naked? Will Greenlee or me? <laughs> Who do you think, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. Who do you say think? That ag- say the last part again. It okay, broke up for a second. It should be noted that clothing not required facilities, such as nudist resorts, allow people to be en naturel. Mm-hmm. See, I don't know Dan well enough to know if he would use all natrial. Not <laughs> I don't know if I know me well enough. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Dan on that one. Okay, okay. I think that's Greenlee. Still, I think we're still in Greenleeville. Okay, the person that wanted you to know that you could go to, to a clothing not required facility such as a nudist resort is Will Greenlee. Ah! Jeff, one for two. All right, here we go. Wow. I know. Okay. It's hard. It's hard. Never underestimate the over explanation of Will Greenlee. There is such a place 23 miles away from where the alleged naked lady encountered was encountered in Indian River County. Who wanted you to know that there is a nudist resort that has nothing to do with this story 23 miles exactly from where this woman got naked and spit on somebody? Who is that, Jeff? Wow. Um, I believe. Well, I mean, maybe he's maybe. 
Maybe Dan's been too busy and, and he's just reading Greenlee. <laughs> <laughs> so you think it's Greenlee? Yeah. Okay. I think it's Greenlee too. I think, I mean, Dan could have looked up nearest nudist colony mm -hmm. and then, but I don't know if that's a lot of work. Yeah. But if he looked it up, would it really be 23 miles away? I you mean, can, he wouldn't know that. Yeah, you can. You can, cause they told you what block it was. You can do a Google map search and be like 23 <laughs> miles. True. And also we don't know if it's 23 miles. We're just accepting that that's the reality. It, <laughs> yeah. It, no one could be a made up Jeff number. You know how, it. <laughs> my Tesla has like, where the superchargers are, I would. Mm -hmm. It would be a great feature if you could find out where the nudist, nudist colonies are. <laughs> uh, uh, <All> right. <laughs> I'm going to say that was Greenlee. I think okay. it's Greenlee. The person that wanted you to know that there was a nudist colony 23 miles away, just as like a little offhand comment, was Will Greenlee. Oh, okay, two for three, Jeffrey. Right, We're three Jeffrey. for three. The spot is west of Fort Pierce in St. Lucie County and is known as Sunnier Palms Nudist Park and Campground. Who is now doing a full-on commercial <laughs> for a nudist colony within this story about a woman who spit on a guy on a bike? Yeah, now we're going into this. We're on such a detour here. Do you agree with us, Jeff, that he has 1,500 words that he has to fill, and he's just trying to throw everything in there? He doesn't want to lose his column inches, yes, so he right. keeps going. If he puts in a 600 word, that's what he's going to get next time. Mm -hmm. if, he keeps, if he keeps writing about... Uh, nude, 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 nude bodies. Yeah. Inches. He'll he'll penis inches. He'll yeah. get keep his column. Inch. There right. you go. Keep inches, e inches. Inches equal inches. His column keeps growing. The more it's it's uh, strong. <laughs> I think that was Greenlee. Jeff, who do you think that was? Still definitely definitely Greenlee. Okay, I think Jay. it's Greenlee too. I think we're still in we're in like a Greenlee like vortex. vortex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think this is all. And we're part still of in it. Greenland. We're, we're still in Greenland. Greenland. <laughs> yeah, <it's> Greenland. <laughs> okay. The place, Sunnier Palms Nudist Park and Campground, the one who wanted you to know that that was real and existed was Will Greenlee. Okay. Jeff is three for four. Okay. Playing this game for the first time. Sunnier Palms. I actually would have gotten the second one, but I figured, like, you guys be cute. You go back and forth. Right. So I, I was trying there to, like, is, there no is pattern. no rhyme when, or reason. When we did this with I Paul was, F. Tompkins and Will Arnett and Colin Hay, they were all him. I didn't have to write one. It was so insane. Okay. Oh, now I know one's coming. All right. <laughs> Sunnier Palms was established in 1992 and promotes an active nudist atmosphere for tent and RV campers, resident members, day visitors, nature lovers, and active nudists, according to its website. Jesus. What are we? If this is Greenlee. He has now gone so far away from the story. Yeah, the story was about a naked woman spitting on a cyclist, and, and now we're just talking about a who nudist. Who wanted to give you the history of Sunnier Palms? Do you think he just copies and pastes out of, like, brochures? I, I personally think this is Dan's first entry into this story. That's me. I think it's Have Dan. you guys... Uh, can I... All right, well... Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, all yeah. right, well, that's... Have you, have you reached out? Have you had this guy on the show? <laughs> no. So if we ever get to, because we've done the podcast live and it's so much fun and you'll do a live one with us, which it, it's so fun live. It is just a blast. If we ever do one down in Florida, we absolutely have to have this guy on. Like he'd be amazing. I, yeah. think, I think people, I think people have reached out to him and tagged him and let him know that we do stuff. About he understands him. it. I mean, again, it is crazy what he does. But there's a certain thing that we love about him, too. You know what I mean? Like, we don't hate him. Yeah, we think he's yeah. like a lovable guy. So, all right, Jeff, I think that's Dan. Mm -hmm. Who do you think did the, basically, the description? I, well, because Dan gave a tell earlier. So I, I'm going to go with Dan on okay, this one. Okay, Jay. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, there are, uh, I'm going to use my poker skills here and, and, okay. and call this one out. Right. So Michael Che, when he was on the show, said, I got the pattern. He said, I figured it out. And then he proceeded to get the next three wrong. So I'm going to say... <laughs> I'm going to say that that was Greenlee again. Okay. The person who wrote that Sunnier Palms was established in 1992 and promotes an active nudist atmosphere for tent and RV campers, <laughs> resident members, day visitors, nature lovers, and active students, according to its website, is... Greenlee. Greenlee. Oh, I was right. Jason. Way five for five. In under the wire, Jeffrey. Jeff, Jeff well, you, you and I both got... No, no, Jeff. On. Jeff switched just to Greenlee right in the last minute. Oh, you did? Great. Yeah. Last yeah. yeah. Solid. All right. I want to say at this moment, though, Will Greenlee has definitely been there, right? 
Oh, to the nudist place? Yes. What do you think? You think he's to been do to this the- big of a plug for something? I think he visited. If he ha- if he's not a member, he visited uh, under the pretense of writing an article. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just want to write so a the, piece. So, Maybe so that way, as a journalist, he wouldn't have to take his clothes off. That's, That's right. Right. very true. Ooh, so do we great. have any idea what this guy looks like? Is yeah, yeah crazy. With the byline? Jay, get a picture of him, and we'll we'll show you. <laughs> he looks he looks intense, but affable. Yeah, he looks like an intense librarian. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. An intense librarian. Yeah. Um, like when people tell you to shush in a library, he tells them to shush. <laughs> yeah, you go. You know yeah, what I mean? Like give it a little back. Quieting. All right, Jake. He'll go, give it a little hold back. It, hold it up so Jeff can see it. Okay. See him? He's def- he definitely visited the nudist column. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 Je- I got Jay. Hold it up there. I want Jeff Ross to do one quick roast of, of the picture of Will Greenlee. <laughs> wow. I think his eyebrows are also, he left them at the nudist colony. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey. Right. As for the woman <laughs> in Indian River County, investigators reported she was yelling and her breasts were completely out of her shirt, which is a piece of clothing commonly worn over the torso and not made for bearing breasts. Who wants you, you to know, know what, what a shirt is? is? I don't know. I think we might have lost Jeff. Oh shoot, Jeff! Did we lose you? Wait, read that one. Okay, all right, we're good. Okay, Okay, we're good. Your guy's camera broke up. No worries. Sorry on our end. Here we go. Ready? As for the woman in Indian River County, investigators reported she was yelling and her breasts were quote completely out of her shirt, which is a piece of clothing commonly worn over the torso and not made for bearing breasts. (laughs) Who wants you to know what a shirt is, Jeff? That seems a little sticky for the for Greenlee. I'm going to go with Dan. Okay. I think that's Dan too. Okay. Jay, you're gonna look stay with pi- Greenlee. Look how stay with Greenlee. Look how pissed. Look how pissed that is. <laughs> it's Greenlee. Okay. The person, <laughs> the person who wanted you to know what a piece of clothing commonly worn over the torso and not made for bearing breasts. The one who wrote that is me. Oh, yeah. Nice. Well done, gentlemen. Way well done. to go. Pound pound, Jeffrey. Pound, Good work, pound. though, Dan. Good work. Because yes. we weren't sure until you said it. I know. Solid. I'll take it. Quote, I could not... This is another... Quote, I could not tell if she was wearing panties despite having no pants on the affidavit states. What does that mean? She's got like a big roll, which I'm not trying to shame. I'm just no, saying... Or, the, or, or they're, they're nude, nude colored. colored. Sometimes suppose, nude colored. Or they're pants. up the crack. I don't know. A bicycle rider reported the woman was completely t- topless and spit on the bicyclist's face. Oh. oh, the alleged naked lady smelled of booze. Oh, that's a surprise. Two things that weird. The naked lady smelled of booze. Two things that would have been fine at Sunnier Palms, since it welcomes nudists from all over the globe, offering the cooperative spirit and active participation in nude recreation to all who visit. Who wow. wanted That's, you to know? This is like branded content. A little bit more <laughs> about Sun of Your Palms. <laughs> is that Dan or Green? I know that one's I know that one's Greeley because unless you're just acting, like you don't know what it says. Yeah. Like that's the one you read you read you read clunkily. So I'm I'm gonna I'm okay. gonna I'm yeah. gonna disregard oh, the information and I'm gonna and disregard go on the what read you said and go on read and go on the read. Okay, Jay, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with Greenlee. I think it's Greenlee too. Okay. I think he that's, feels beholden to this. I think it's column. Dan. I think that's one step over the line for Greenlee. Okay. Two things that would have been fine at Sunnier Palms since it welcomes nudists from all over the globe, offering a cooperative spirit and active participation in nude recreation to all who visit. The wait, person. wait, before, before you say that, if it is Greenlee, he has now gone so far to promote this nude, nudist colony. <laughs> it's insane that this is in an art. If it's him. The person who wrote that is Will Greenlee. No! No. I think he wrote as yeah. much about this Woo! nudist colony. <laughs> well done, Jeffrey Ross. Jeffrey I, Ross. He's going to get a free membership. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Right? Uh, I mean, he's angling. That is, my thing Jeffrey. is like, yeah, he, he either like, someone who broke up with him is now there and he's like trying to like, I'm writing about, I think he's like sub writing people. Uh-huh. <laughs> It says she was arrested on charges of battery, disorderly intoxication, and exposure of sexual organs. Before we leave, I will ask you, my friends, how old do you think this woman is that took off all her clothes? Spit on a cyclist. Could not see if she had panties on or not. And she spit on a cyclist. Yes. On the side of the road. And she's Jeff, been drinking. How old do you and think she's she is? been drinking? 22. 22, 22 years God, old. That was quick. 
came quick. 47. 47 years old from Jason Sklar. 56. 56 yeah. years old. Yeah. One of you is only one year off. Oh, wow. Does anyone want to change their answer one year or the other? 21. 45. 21? 21? 45. 45? If I said 56? Yes. 55. Okay. The woman who spit on everyone, mm-hmm. or one man, mm-hmm. and gave us a Greenlee and a n- nudist colony that we definitely all now know Now we know about. everything Great about. Great plug. Is... 48 years old. Oh, I was so <laughs> close. Jeff, that's how old we are. Oh, my God. Great job. Jesus. That's insane. All right. Great job. That's the first story that's down in the books. Jeff Ross, Jeff Ross is with us, and I'm so happy he When is. we come back, we'll give you, we'll tell you how you can uh, tap into his podcast and all the great stuff he's been doing. Uh, this is dumb, dumb People Town. Stay with us. Stick around. Make a sound for more Dumb People Town. Hey, Townies, it's me, Daniel Van Kirk. And guess what? I'm going to talk to you about Brooklinen. You know why? One, because they sponsor us. Two, if you're looking for great sheets, you should use them because then everyone wins. They're happy. We have a sponsor and you have some of the best sheets of your life. And you should know that Brooklinen is the internet's favorite sheets, but they're also home bedding, loungewear, towels, and more with over 50,000 five-star reviews and counting. If you were looking online to buy something and it had over 50,000 five-star reviews, you'd be like, well, this is the one. And if what you were looking at was Brooklinen, you would be right. I'm not a sheet guy and I love these sheets. That should be all I have to tell you because I'm telling you the truth. They were founded in 2014. It's a new company. You can get them while they're young. Be the cool one who knew before everybody else, unless you're all in your circle listening to this. Maybe be the first one who orders them then. I don't know. Race. See who finds out. But they were founded in 2014 by a husband and wife duo, Rich and Vicky Fullop. They wanted to find beautiful home essentials that didn't cost an arm and a leg, and they are on a mission to make you more comfortable but now they've moved beyond the bedroom yeah it's not just sheets to offer you life essentials like towels they're super plush shower curtains bath mats robes candles even ultra soft loungewear they even have silk eye masks robes furniture art and totes you can get everything you need from a company who makes everything great brooklinen.com is the perfect place to start making small changes that make big differences in your life we are all trying to do that right now and they're so confident that their product uh, in their product that all their sheets comforters loungewear towels have a lifetime warranty so just go on make yourself comfortable with confidence you can also get 10 percent off your first order and free shipping when you use promo code dpt at brooklinen.com that's b-r-o-o-k L-I-N-E-N dot com. Brooklinen dot com. Code DPT for that promo code DPT. That'll get you 10% off your first order and free shipping. Brooklinen, everything you need to live your most comfortable life. Guys, I want to talk to you about something that's super important, um, your mental health. Mm-hmm. We know that right now everyone has a general level of anxiety in their world and now added on top of that, is the world anxiety, the world of anxiety that has been placed on all of our shoulders because of this pandemic, whether it be economic issues, whether it be social issues, whether it be general anxiety stuff that all we all feel we're building All you have to do is scroll through your phone and you can start to feel that anxiety. And whether you're in a house that is making you more anxious or you're quarantining alone and that loneliness is very difficult, we want to make sure you guys are taking care of yourselves. And that's why I love that we have this sponsored talk space. They're amazing. They're an online therapy and they are more committed than ever to expanding access for anyone who is struggling right now. With talk space, you get the support of a licensed therapist from the safety of your own home and can reach out from your device whenever something is on your mind. You can send a therapist text, audio, picture, or video messages from your phone or computer 24-7 as uh, thousands of licensed therapists are there to help you out. They'll match you with one that can... And look, I know my wife's practice has grown in the time of this pandemic, mainly because people are needing that connection and needing that outlet and needing that resource. I love Talkspace because they have thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, including the ones that are the most important right now. Anxiety, depression, relationship issues, the things that keep you up at night, they're going to help you out. 
Once you're matched, you can begin your therapy the exact same day. This is really good. So in honor of Mental Health Month, uh, Talkspace is online therapy committed to fostering a global community. They get it. They get Here's it. That's the bottom line. You deserve, you deserve support. You deserve not to have to struggle anymore on your own. Your Talkspace therapist can be your dedicated support system there to make you feel healthier. That's right. And more empowered even in these uncertain times. As a listener of our podcast, you get $100 off your first month of Talkspace. To match with your perfect therapist, go to Talkspace.com or download the app. Make sure you use the code SCLAR. It gets you $100 off and lets them know that we sent you there. That's SCLAR at Talkspace.com. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the show. We got Jeff Ross with us. Uh, Jeff, tell people about your podcast. We've done it. It's so much fun, and it's it's really beautiful. And how can people find it? Oh, thanks. It's called Thick Skin with Jeff Ross. And it's about getting through life. Mm-hmm. I ask every guest how they get through the blues, but it's also a lot of fun. And, and, and I talk to people I care about like you guys. And like I said earlier, I had, a I I had friends on from real life and from fake life. We had yeah. everybody from everybody from, uh, Gary Clark Jr. To Joe exotic on recently. <laughs> so good. So good. Dude, did you say There's that- a, did you say There's the TMZ a really, hit what? you up when that happened too? Did TMZ hit you up when you did the? No, jokes? no, no. Yeah, TMZ. The second I posted the Joe Exotic interview, yeah, um, Harvey Levin called me and said, "Will you go live with us right now?" I go, "Harvey, <laughs> it's, it's April joke. Fool's Day." Yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> so good. <laughs> What's in your giant coffee smoothie, dude? <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. So we have we have we have some upcoming fake interviews with. Uh, with uh, Joe Biden and uh, and uh, Dr. Fauci, great, and Jeff Bezos coming up. But then we also kind of just talk about life in general. And you should have Brad Dan. Paisley. Brad Paisley gave me some songwriting lessons the other day, and he's awesome. He's so and uh, Eric Stone Street is good friends with Paisley and has told like great stories about what a sweet guy, what a sweet, unassuming. He's like if one of your friends was just a humongous country music star. And he's and he's funny. Like yeah, he's yeah. got comic timing. <clears throat> yeah, and we have Al, Al, Al Franken's up this week, and he really lets loose and nice. opens up about all the shit he's been through. So oh my god, I can't a, wait to hear it. It's amazing, dude. It, it's a cathartic experience. I put it on iTunes. You oh, gotta right. have Dan on as Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> yeah, you can have like fake Mark Wahlberg. He, he, no let's one hear does your it. Mark Wahlberg. It's let's hear it. Hey talk- Mark. Yeah, what's hey up, Mark. Dude? How, what's up, dude? How, how's How's quarantine going? Are you kidding me? I got access to my own gym, and Donnie is uh, isolated. That's all I need. <laughs> I told him, I was, like, wow. Donnie, I was like, Donnie, you can't leave the garage. It's for your own health, and it's finally working. <laughs> Mark, do you, do, do you think you could beat up coronavirus? Uh, let me ask you this. Does coronavirus have two arms? <laughs> let me ask you this. Yes. Have you seen Lone Survivor? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I'm the lone survivor. Ah, you got to have him on. Shit, man. <laughs> Thanks, on, buddy. Wow. <clears throat> Marky Mark. I'm into that. That's a good one, Dan. I love when, this, when this is done, we'll give you his number. It, it, no one improvises better than Dan, oh, and he has that as good character as it unlock. All right, let's get into another story. Okay, Jeff, you ready? you ready for another story? Yeah. This yeah. is fun. I feel like I say this from time to time, but especially with the four of us, I feel like it's definitely true. And with Shh. this headline, I'm going to read it to you first. I will say first, though, it is sent in by Taylor Said at... Taylor said, that's S-E-D. Thank you, Taylor. Here's the headline. Man says he broke into San Diego Wells Fargo Bank to heat up his Hot Pockets. (laughs) No. Is it Jim Gaffigan? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, but he's a Jim Gaffigan fan. He definitely is. Hot Pockets. What is going on in your life that not only... Do you want Hot Pockets, but you want them so bad? You're going to break into a place that has nothing to do with Hot Pockets. Right, you could go into the back corner of a 7-Eleven. No one's paying attention to what you're doing to that microwave. By the way, you could go into a 7-Eleven, pick up a burrito, and then walk over to the thing, put your Hot Pockets in from your home, and then just be like, you know what? I'm not going to get the burrito. How many times have you done this? That's good advice. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) It came off the top of my head. When you go to college in Michigan, you got to find a way. Yeah, you have to find a way. Uh, Yeah. But I'm just like, who else is like, what is the hardest thing I could break into right now for a fucking hot pocket? A bank. Right. (laughs) A bank is so hard. Clearly, clearly this was his like, dog ate my homework excuse for breaking into a bank. That's right. Right. Well, he was hungry. 
Your Honor, my client was hungry. He wasn't broke and, and desperate. He was just hungry. He's just hungry. He's just trying to heat up a hot pocket, right. for Christ's sake. You guys hungry? What do you guys want for lunch? Wells Fargo, or do you guys want to go to Pink's? I think we go to... <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Wells Fargo. Uh, so San Diego from KGTV. A man who was arrested on suspicion of breaking into a bank early Wednesday morning, uh, morning apparently entered the branch just so he can eat up his Hot Pockets sandwiches. So more than one, too. It's more than one. And to call him a sandwich. Greenly! Greenly! Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a greenly. <laughs> if you're going to go to all that effort to break into a bank for Hot Pockets, which I want to assume he did, yeah. the amount of times someone has told this man, you are your own worst enemy. <laughs> you need to get out of your get own way. Get out of your own way. Right. It doesn't have to be a bank. No. It no. really does. And everyone knows that at a bank, they keep the hot pockets in the safety deposit That's box. That's correct. So, sure. You got to have two keys. Have He's two never keys. getting them. They keep a key and you have a key. And Both that's how you open the them. Key in and that's how you get it. <laughs> that's at it. around 3.30 a.m., San Diego oh, police boy. were dispatched to the Wells Fargo Bank branch on 30, 40, 346, I'm sorry, Uslet Avenue after a burglar alarm had gone off. Mm. Responding officers arrived to find a broken window near the bank's drive-thru. If mm. that's also all it took to get into this bank... That's not good either. No, if you that's can just on them. Yeah. If you can just break into a bank by breaking a window at the drive-thru. And you're in. And you're all the way in. And you're in. Yeah. The, you're wow. in the break room just eating Hot Pockets. Glenn, you think uh, anybody's going to break through in, during the drive-thru area? Why would they do that, Michael? That's the drive through <laughs> Yeah. No one's <laughs> going to think to do that. There. No one would ever come through here on foot. See, so... That's the way he did it. They didn't go through the front door. No. They went through the drive through Do you think this is going to, oh. Jeff, do you think this is going to make banks rethink how they secure their drive through I thought you were going to say micro or microwaves. How they secure their hot pockets. <laughs> <You're on out. laughs> so I'm confused. How did he get through the drive through There was a window and he climbed. You know, that, like, you know how there's a drive so the window where you see the teller <clears throat> in right. the drive through As you go through the drive through right. at the bank. He broke. So the bank was closed. Yes. Bank at 3 a.m. He breaks through the drive through window and jumps through. Yeah. Jeez. The alarm company told police that surveillance cameras outside the branch captured the man inside a break room and using the microwave. He really did do this. He Jeff, really did Jeff, do it. It's not Jeff, a lie. He's not a lie. He just wanted to heat it up. Wow. Do he didn't think- take any money. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> he probably didn't even know it was a bank. <laughs> this is my hope. He used to work at this bank. Okay. He donated the microphone to the or the microwave, microwave to, to the, the bank bank. room. To the break room. He got fired. Yep. And, he and says, they said, can I take my microwave? And no, it belongs to the bank now. And he was like, okay. Okay. All well, right. I'm using uh, that microwave okay. again. Well, that's well, the most plausible explanation I've <laughs> We'll heard. see about that. Jeez. I mean, I've got to get behind some sort of Please, logic. Please, that, that's way. the only logical thing. After about an hour. I guess it's a better, sorry, sorry. I no, guess no. it's a better story than if it's like, yes, I broke in the bank to heat up my caviar. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. He's a man of the people, is what you're saying. Yeah, you know, I mean, he, it's relatable. He's right. just a guy who needs a microwave. That's it. You know? Eat, eat for the robbery you're committing, not, not for the one you want to be. That's right. right. That's eat, right. pray, steal. Eat, pray, steal. <laughs> one of my favorite, favorite books. Favorite Julia Roberts movies. Danger has his life. You won't stop talking mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, after about an hour, officers broke through the front doors and located the man inside, which means either they waited an hour to get there or where they were waiting for him to get out. Maybe or they, they took hoping- them an hour to get in when he, he, all they had to do was go through the same window he did. I know. That's that was it. So for an hour, they're like, buddy. Hey, we know. It's almost like they're talking to a dog. They're like, hey, come on out. Or trying to coax a cat out. Have any of you eaten a Hot Pocket? Have you eaten a Hot Pocket, well, Jeff? I, I actually tried my first Hot Pocket during quarantine, and I loved it. Really? Ooh, what flavor did you go with? Broccoli, it was like cheese, a pe- ham? It was like a pizza thing. Oh, Ooh. yeah. So it was like a- so, so my son was super into little <laughs> Tortinos, which are kind of like mini Hot Pockets. Yeah. And I got into those. Because, of course, like there's a plate of them. He'll eat like 14. There's like four left. And I'm like, ah, I'll eat them. What are we going to do? Throw these away? And I'll that four them. was enough sodium for your week. Uh, I have diarrhea for have the next two days. Have you had a hot pocket? I've, ne- I've never. Oh, I might have had had It's a- insane. It's too much. It's too. What does it taste like? It's too. Heartburn. I, it, tastes, it tastes like it's like designed in a lab to be great. Okay. So it, it it's like if someone was like. If you've never seen a pizza before, but rolled it or, up. <clears throat> it reminds me. <clears throat> sorry. I don't know if they had these in Chicago, but when I was a kid, um, 
Strombolis. Yes. Yeah. So it's a full. They're like a little mini Stromboli. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's exactly it. Chicago was the last time I had a Stromboli. Really? It was yeah. in Chicago? We could yeah, get them because they were cheap. We could get them in college. Like, right. It was it, and you'd be full. And if you were drunk, they were is, wonderful. Was is a calzone like a cousin to the Stromboli? That calzone sort of is like a you folded it. your pizza. It's a over. one over. Yeah. Right, I think I think you're right. Yeah, I think no, you're right. They're both same thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, after about an hour, officers broke through the front doors and located the man inside. I just, in my mind, I hope they were talking to each other the whole time. As officers took him outside and arrested him, the man told Ten News Breaking News Tracker, we don't need that, mm-hmm. that he entered the bank just so he can microwave his hot pockets. That's all he wanted. When asked if hot pockets were worth it, the man responded on camera, "Quote, hell yeah, it was worth it." Now, so this, if you it, are hot pockets please tell me you don't cut that into a commercial right worth breaking well, into a bank for and they should put a little thing like we don't condone breaking into a bank but we get it <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're, it's we're like the version the, of the chris rock bit we're, that, we're I'm not, not saying, saying he did it i'm just saying, saying i understand or <laughs> even better it's like hot pockets they won't break the bank but they'll make you want to break into one there you go there you go oh, i like it that's, that's good that's, that's really not expensive you can get Jay's a bunch on of them. fire if they did just if they did just license or you know whatever that footage that is a perfect commercial. We don't condone this, but we but, get it. But we, we get, get it. it. We understand. Jeff, you're you're dead on. Oh, I think that's so good. Uh, police did not release any further details on the incident. That takes care of story number two. Okay, Jeez. give us a little taste of what we're going to see at the end here. Okay, you got it. Uh, a guy was arrested for the dumbest and most confusing reason I've ever heard. All right. Jeff Ross is with us. The roast master general. We are, have one more segment of dumb people town, and this is making me feel better. I will be back right after the break. Yeah. <laughs> Stick around. Make a sound. There's more dumb people town. All right. This is a company that's been with us for a long time, which tells you two things. One, they believe in their product. They're not going anywhere. Two, they believe in us, and we want you to believe in us too when we tell you that Quip is great. We've all, or I should say most of us, had our morning or evening routine changed, but you also have to think about how does that change other things in your life, like brushing your teeth, and you need to stay healthy, y'all. You have to. You know, you might be doing more puzzles. You might be doing more games. You might be working harder than ever. You might be trying to work harder than ever, but you have to remember to take care of yourself. And Quip is the best for that when it comes to oral care because good health starts with good habits and Quip makes it easy by delivering all the oral care essentials and they uh, give you all the reasons to be able to brush and floss Better. Their electric toothbrush has timed sonic vibrations with 30 second pulses to guide the dentist recommended two minute routine. And there's even a size down version for them little kids, y'all. Uh, they also have an eco friendly, reliable floss with a dispenser you keep for life and an expanding string that helps to clean between the teeth. They are automatically delivered. Yeah, if you go and you get this refill uh, thing all set up, you're going to get automatic delivered dentist recommended schedule of three months for just $5 each. And a friendly reminder when it's time to refresh and stay committed to your oral health. And the shipping is free. So join over 3 million happy customers and practice good oral care easily and affordably with Quip. Uh, the, uh, guess what? It starts at 25 bucks. I can't. How did I almost forget to say that? 25 bucks to get you going and be happy and healthy with your oral care. All you have to do is go to getquip.com slash DPT right now and you'll get your first refill free. So that's 25 bucks to get you started and then your first refill is free. That's your first refill at getquip.com slash DPT. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash D-P-T. Quip, the good habits company. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I want to remind people before we get into this final story, Dan Van Kirk has a wonderful nightly podcast called uh, The Good Good Night Night Show. Show. Mm -hmm. I happen to listen to it first thing in the morning. 
It settles me down. It, I, I highly recommend this. This is a calming podcast in the rough waters that we are in. 15 to 25 minutes every day. Tops, yeah. And it's really, really a beautiful pod. I enjoy we have it a too. daily podcast called uh, Sclabro Country, the virus edition, where we just try and take on what other what whatever silly stuff is. This week I did, I actually went after someone on nextdoor.com and I read all of my responses in this fight that I had with a person. And I was, <laughs> as I was doing it on, as I was fighting and as I was doing it on camera, I started sweating like nobody's business. <laughs> and in the background of Randy's head, in his head, he heard Jamar neighbors say, keep going, keep <laughs> going. <laughs> Keep going. That's what I hear in the back. I of my love head. that. So, so that, so we do that kind of stuff. We talk about like the Mexican senator who took her top off during a Zoom call. All those crazy things that are I happening right what? now. What? It's a oh, goodie. Oh, it's pretty it's good. It's a goodie. She Dan. didn't realize the camera was still on. Did Sixty-six you, I saw the year old early, woman. Early on, there was some Zoom where there was like a. Like a company wide meeting. There was like woman goes in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah woman goes to the bathroom. This is worse. Woman takes, takes shirt and oh, bra God. off, still on the thing. Unbelievable. We get into all those stories on our podcast. And once again, Jeff's podcast is Thick Skin with Jeff Ross. Listen to our episode. So many amazing episodes. Hey, maybe a future episode will be with Mark Wahlberg. Who knows? Uh, but support. And what's your handle on the social media for everybody to follow you, Jeff? My, I'm uh, uh, at the real Jeffrey Ross on Instagram and nice. real real Jeffrey Ross on Twitter. Oh and by You're the way, such a good follow I, on Instagram, so fun the stuff you post. Thanks, man. So I've good. really been I've really been doubling down on the social media. I felt like I didn't tweet jokes for a few years. It just didn't feel safe anymore. So I would save the heat from my live shows. Right. But now in pandemic time, I'm like, all right, you got to tweet. It. You got to make yeah. Your, I, laugh I have a theory. So much. I laugh so much I, at your stuff. I think like the three of you guys, wherever you're quarantining with your families, funny people need have an obligation to cheer up the people around them during That's these so times. So. It, it is why we have kept doing this podcast. We are all sort of in a little pod. Dan hasn't seen anyone. We've just been with our family. So like, you know, we're able to be, get together. We, you know, we were given the choice. Should we keep doing this podcast through this time or not? And we were like, absolutely. It is our duty to bring comedy to people. That's what we do. Uh, Jeff Ross, you do it's so funny because it's just simple. You'll take a screenshot of a tweet that you do and put it on Instagram and it's literally yeah. just the words and I'm dying. I'm like, <laughs> I know that Instagram is a visual art form, especially you can do video and all that other stuff. But like, it is so rare that that person can just put up the tweet up there and I'm always laughing. So please follow the real Jeffrey Ross yeah. on Instagram and on Twitter. And let's jump in. I had a stuff. good one. Oh, yeah, go I ahead, had a good go one today. I yeah. had a good one today. Oh, I wrote, um, I, 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 all I wrote was, is God, t is God taking an improv class? Yes. I just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was on a, I was on a, the top of the, um, parking structure in Glendale yeah. charging my car. Yeah. There's a Tesla charging station and uh, there was an earthquake yesterday. Yeah, I'm like, this is how I'm going to fucking die during a pandemic. <laughs> They're rioting downstairs uh -huh. and I'm going to die in an earthquake. Charging yeah. your car. It's God taking fucking an improv unreal. class. That's I, so I, fun. I need a location, Earth. Oh, All right. Jesus. So <laughs> I just keep thinking of 2020 as Tig Notaro's bit where she was like, listing all the things she had been through at that famous set that they recorded at Largo. And she said, you guys, don't worry, though, because God says he'll never give me any more than I can handle, which means I just picture the angels up there with God going... I think you. I think that's enough. And God going. Ah, I think she can take just. She can a take a little bit more. Take a little bit and more. I feel like that's what's like. The angels are like. I think they've had it with twenty twenty. He's like. Mm, nah, yeah. Let's see if we can get. Oh, an, yeah. Let's see if we can get an earthquake in there. <laughs> yeah. They can handle it. Yeah, that Jesus. was madness. Great, great tweet. Okay, great. All Instagram. right, last story. Let's get into this and let's. Uh, Here we go. We'll wrap it up. Sent in by Pete Yarbrough. Mm -hmm. A Minneapolis man was arrested last Wednesday night after this is all the way back on April twenty third after leading state police on a pursuit on the Indiana Toll Road. So he's from Minnesota, but he was on the Indiana Toll Road. Mm -hmm. About 9.20 p.m., officers in two separate marked police vehicles near the 96-mile marker in Elkert <laughs> County mm -hmm. observed a red Mustang, because that's totally on brand for this red type of story, Mustang. traveling westbound at a high speed. A radar reading showed the co car going more than how fast do you guys think this red Mustang, I assume it's new, they didn't give a year, yeah. was going How fast do you think it was going? Jeff? How fast? Yeah, yeah, how fast do you think it was What's going? What's enough to make this a story? It's not about the speed, though. I'll tell you that. I don't want to get you up to like NASCAR low level. 88. 88. Okay. Jay, what do you think? Um, 120. Okay. 
I think 130. Okay. One of you mm-hmm. is exactly right. Oh, oh, so Jeff, now we get to play the game. Who do you think is exactly right? Do you think it's <laughs> Jay? Do you think it's you? Or do you think it's me? Read it again. Okay. They observed a red Mustang traveling westbound at a high speed. A radar reading showed the car going more than blank miles per hour, according to a news release. Jay said 120. I said 130. You said 88. I think it's got to be 130. Okay. I think it's me. I think think it's it's me. me, 120. Okay. The radar reading at that time showed the car going 120 miles per hour. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Right, Jeff, the you know. Okay, there you go. Both officers caught up to the Mustang Gosh. with lights and sirens activated, but the Mustang's driver refused to stop. Jeez. This is when I'm going to read you the headline. Man arrested after toll road pursuit said he thought police wanted to race. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. That's, <laughs> that's what they want to do. He they thought the game on. He thought siren, lights, lights were Lights and game sirens on. were like, go, Let's Fast go. and the Furious style. I Let's guess I'm the pace car. I, don't yeah, I, I, I bid low thinking like, you know, like on the price is right. Like sure, I'd exactly. find it. I'd, I knew you guys would go big. Yeah. Yes. So I was like, maybe, maybe there's some twist to it. Like he's hanging out the window. Yes. Or, you know. That's true. That's true, too. No, he's locked into this race with cops. Oh, my Jeez. God. Jeez. Uh, and he's going wow. 120. And he's going 120. Yes, the Mustang then avoided stop st- or uh, yeah, the Mustang Tolls. then avoided stop sticks mm-hmm. deployed by the assisting officer on the 84 mile marker. So that's 12 miles away. He's doing that in about six minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, stop sticks were then deployed again and were successful deflating the tires on the Mustang. The man driving the car told police he did not stop because he thought the troopers wanted to race. Sure. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. Nope. That's not what people want to do. He was arrested on suspicion of resisting law enforcement and reckless driving and also received several moving violations. He was booked into the Elkhart County Jail. What age do you guys think a person is when they believe cops just wanted to race them in their red Mustang? Mm Mm-hmm. How old? Imagine if, imagine if all the all our problems in the world would be solved if instead of police brutality, we were mad at them just for racing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. <laughs> well, we are mad at them about race for some issues. Yeah, it's you know a different what? race. It's a race different race. Issue. <laughs> right. Very true. Well said. Well Thank said. You. Uh, okay, you you don't you are a guest. You do not have to go first, Jeff. If you don't want to, you can go you can go second or third. I'll go third. Okay, you'll go third. All right. Jay, I'll go wait. first. Jay, what do you think? Five years old, because that's a five-year-old mentality. <laughs> Give me a real Get guess. Get in my race car. Give me All a right. real, real guess. guess. Okay, real guess. I'm going to say 27. 27 years old. That's I, that's some in your 20s bravado. Like, I remember Jeff. I We, pro- we probably met Jeff when he was about 20, 28, 29. 26 or 25. What are you, a couple years older than us? Um, yeah, I think so. so. I think we met you in, in New York when you were about 25. So this is two you years old. This is this is young New York Jeff Ross who'd make Bravado, this mistake. Who would make this mistake? I think it, I think he's twenty. Yeah. Okay, Jeff, what do you think? What year was the Mustang? It we don't know. Say. It doesn't new, say. Though, we're it's probably new. I'm gonna say midlife crisis kind of thing. I'm ah. gonna say this guy was. I'm gonna say this guy was fifty. Fifty, 50 twenty-seven, and twenty. I say twenty. That is a range right there. If fifty, if if fifty is right, and I'm not saying it isn't, mm-hmm. but if he is an older man, and I'm not saying he isn't. Mm-hmm. And he misinterprets getting pulled over for wanting to race. That is his lack of communication means he is definitely divorced. Yeah, oh, definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This he, is I'm going to show her yeah. type and of and a race. It's his fault. Yeah. It's okay. His here fault. we go. We'll close it out here. The man who told the cops he didn't stop because he thought the troopers wanted to race is 25 years old. Oh, oh see, I was there close. We go. But that there makes me go. feel like he oh, did not wow. pay for that car. No, but Jeff could have been right because it feels like this was a midlife crisis because he's not going to live. It also feels years. like, you know, some lawyer concocted a funny answer for that or like, <laughs> yeah. or, or you know, like yeah. an older guy would go, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to give him a, a dummy answer. Yeah, yeah that, sure. it does feel like, like he didn't know how to, like for in the moment he got so intoxicated with the speed he like didn't he, know how to slow like down. he didn't want the money he just wanted the hot, hot pockets, pockets. Yeah. that's what we got yeah all right there's our <laughs> show you guys uh check out thick skin with jeff ross fantastic podcast follow him the real jeffrey ross on all social medias uh we have, follow us we're at school brothers he's at daniel van kirk mm-hmm. and uh, we love you guys stay safe and oh shit we gotta get back to work dumb 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 Stick around.
Make a sound, hunger down, it's dumb people town. Scarpins Avenue, a podcast. <clears throat> a podcast network.